yesterday, I was just about to tell something about <laughs> Now, <laughs> those of you that's tuned in today, Stanley who? <laughs> time to explain that to you. <laughs> get on BBOVN, get on Roku, get on something and get it for yourself. Anyway, Stanley was killed in a truck wreck and, and we, we took that scripture to heart, you know, sorrow not, for we are not a people without hope. Comfort one another with these words and so forth. Jesus is coming. And Gloria had gone to um, a uh, uh, women's meeting, and this woman was the speaker. Now, let me tell you something about Stanley. Stanley, oh man, this guy, he was a journeyman brick and rock mason. Mm, <laughs> He's strongest. I mean, you, his arms, his waist is about this big around take two five-gallon buckets of mud and climb a ladder with them in his hand. I, don't ask me. I watched him do it on my chimney <laughs> at our prayer cabin. He's building the chimney. And he went up, of course, the ladder's leaning. He went up the chimney with two buckets of mud. And I'm standing there with glory of the brother, and I don't believe what I'm seeing, and neither does Doug. I said, Doug, I hope you've got your licks in. He said, I ain't touching him anymore. <laughs> anyway, his arms were, you know, big, and he hated shirts with sleeves in them. He just despised him. You could give him a dress shirt to go to Sunday school. He'd cut the sleeves out and wear a jacket. I mean, you couldn't get the boy to wear sleeves. He just wouldn't do it. Anyway, she came to Gloria after, and she said, Gloria, she said, I, I, I need to tell you this. She said, when I was in heaven, she said, the people were... He said, they're, they're really, really, really busy preparing for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Well, you'd be busy too if you, if you had over a billion people coming to a party. I mean, come on, you know, <laughs> take a while to prepare that. <laughs> oh, no, several billion. Say like six billion or whatever. You know, I don't know. Anyway, three or four billion in here. She said, here was this young man, and she said he was laying out a place, you know, at the, at the tables. And she said, he walked over there and said he walked right up to me and said, tell Gloria I was not in that truck when it burned. Hallelujah. See, when that thing crashed, he was asleep. He never knew anything about the crash. He just woke up in heaven. Glory to God. Now we talked about that yesterday, right? Listen to this. She said, he didn't have any sleeves in the garment he was wearing. <laughs> <laughs> talking about the lack of understanding of righteousness. And we talked about the fact this one holds more people in bondage than anything else. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, Romans 3, 21, 24, we read those. Romans 5, 1. Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, please. Hebrews 10. <laughs> this is another one that uh, 
I, I don't know how to describe. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I do. But I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. First verse, 10th chapter, Hebrews. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices, which they offered year by year continually, make the comers thereunto perfect. Now, don't ever let the, in the Bible, particularly King James Bible, don't let the word perfect, that don't mean flawless. That means complete, it means mature, coming to the place where you should be. For then, let me read it again. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never, those offerings of, of lambs and bulls and animal, animal blood is what he's talking about, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect or complete. For then, would they not have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshipers once purged, the scripture says that Jesus by himself purged our sins with his own blood, should have had no more conscious conscience of sins, should have had no more sin consciousness. But should have had what? A righteousness consciousness. I'm, I'm, I'm a new creature. Uh, I've been made the righteousness of God. This takes meditation. It takes every day talking about it. It takes every day listening to CDs, dig out your old tapes, whatever it takes. I mean, read it to yourself. We, we, were, we were talking last week about uh, reading and feeding on the Word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word preached under the anointing. Amen. And I talked about the fact that I don't like to read. I'm, I'm audio and then that most musicians are that way, and we talk to Patrick about it and David and so forth and so on. But that's no excuse for us to not do it. Right. Right. Huh? Amen. Right. Now, <laughs> come on, Ken. All right. <laughs> now, don't misunderstand me. I love the Word of God. I mean, I just, I just, I love it. And so, oh, yeah, I can do that. Thank God for my phone. Yeah. Okay, I'll listen to him, and I and I'll read the same time I'm reading. Oh, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 <laughs> if you don't have something to do, that read it out loud. Listen to it preached. Listen to it preached. Yes. Amen. 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 Don't just listen to anything that comes down the road. That's right. That's right. You get this. You get the CDs of these these meetings. You get something. You get it and download them. Download them into your phone. Amen. Amen. And listen to it. And listen to it. And listen. Listen to the same one over and over and over. And listen to this about the righteousness of God yes. till it gets down on the inside of you that it puts a run on you that you just can't stop. Yes. Now, when that happens, and I'm I'm ahead of myself here, but listen to me carefully. 
Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And you just keep listening and you just keep reading and you just keep listening and you just keep listening. You be honest to it and, and, and you stay with it. Praise God. You're an athlete in training. You're working, you're building up your spirit muscles. You're building up your faith. You're working at this thing and you're enjoying this thing, but you're doing it whether you enjoy it or not. If you have to get up early in the morning, get up. Amen. Amen. And just like, you know, I don't know how many drops it takes to run the cup over or fill the cup. I know how many it takes to run it over. One. David said, my cup runneth over. Well, stay with it till it runs over. Jesus calls that faith boiling over. We were laying in the bed one night and, and just talking these things. We'd been listening to, and she said, Can I, that, she said, that's faith boiling over. Whoa, that's it. You have to stay with it till it boils. Amen. When it boils, That's when the results come. Glory. I got it immediately. No, you didn't. <laughs> you just got it suddenly, but the pot had to boil. No such thing as water that won't boil. No such thing as faith that don't come by hearing and hearing by the Word That's of right. God. Yes. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you, you get in there and you start listening. Um, listen, listen to these messages right here. Listen, listen to it over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again, particularly about the righteousness of God. The right, because the devil will come in there and say, Yeah, I know who you are. Think about it. You ain't no righteousness of God. You, 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 you big mouth. Now, I know that big mouth preacher talking about all that stuff, but you know you. God been mad at you for 28 years. I know it. Don't you be thinking that. Just reach up and just slap your own jaws. I'm serious. If you're serious, you get right back in there and get on your face before God and say, I repent for even thinking such a stupid lie as that. I've been made the righteousness of God by the sweet blood of Jesus. And I will never receive anything else. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm supposed to be healed. I'm supposed to be well. I'm supposed to be prosperous. I'm supposed to be out of debt. I'm a new creation. I'm supposed to be a prosperity agent. I'm supposed to be a witness to the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Develop a righteousness consciousness, sin consciousness identifies with Adam. A righteousness consciousness identifies with Jesus, the resurrected Lord. Huh? So who do I identify with? Identify with Jesus. All of our lives, if you know, if we didn't know any better, we had never had heard anything like this. I'm talking about honest, wonderful, born again, spirit filled Christians that are still stuck struggling. And this is one of the main reasons why. Because the devil has, a, has them under the force of a lie. You're just an old sinner saved by grace and you're doing the best you can, but you know, you know how it is. I mean, you know, the wrath of God comes on the disobedient and, and you know, he's been mad at me for a long time. Isaiah 54. Oh, I tell you, if this don't set you on fire, your wood's wet. Now, Isaiah 53 
is Jesus on the cross. Surely He's borne our griefs and carried our sorrows and so forth. Now, chapter 54 is speaking to the church. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge, and so forth and so on. So this is speaking to the body of Christ. Now notice in verse 8, in a little wrath, well, verse 7, for a small moment have I forsaken three, three days and three nights. For a small moment, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath, in that small moment, I hid my face from thee for a moment. That's talking about Jesus. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Yes. Say, my, my, Redeemer my Redeemer speaking. Saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee nor rebuke thee. Amen. Glory to Dios. God isn't mad anymore. No. Disappointed? Yes, but not mad. Right. He ain't never mad at you. No, no. Jesus took all the mad out of him. He poured all his mad out on Jesus. And ain't neither one of them mad at you for anything. Or anybody else but the devil. They hate him, but they don't pay no attention to him. They already defeated him and turned him over to us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Can you see it? He's not mad. All of that came out of Old Covenant teaching, and most of that was erroneous because people didn't understand what, what they were reading. But God is love. Yes, He is. I was sitting on the platform one night, and a big crowd and everybody's shouting and praising God and everybody just kind of going wild and, and uh, just having so much fun. And I'm sitting up there enjoying everything. And I heard the word of the Lord, like I said last night, I've never heard the audible voice of God, but right down in here, oh, oh. He said, Kenneth, if it hadn't been for sin, I'd have never had a serious thought. <laughs> well, of course, what is there to be serious about? Death. Amen. Death. That's what made things serious. But then he defeated death. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So his serious thinking is over again. He retired. <laughs> he did. Isn't that right, Greg? And he turned all the judgment over to Jesus and said, Go home. Go get them, boy. Amen. You take care of it. I'm done. <laughs> You put up with them. I'll put up with them as long as I'm <laughs> Oh, if people could get this. Yes. If it ever dawns on you what you have in Christ Jesus and who that is living on the inside of you, there'll be a 100% completely fixed grin on your face that funerals can't even get rid of. <laughs> oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, thank you. The th third one, we'll just have time to introduce this. How much time have we got, Tim? Okay. 
lack of understanding of our place in him and his place in us. Now, I want to give you an assignment. And it's very specific. Look up in the New Testament, beginning with the book of Romans, the phrase, in Christ, in Him, and in whom. Now, it occurs over 130 times. And, of course, it's going to take you some time to look it up. Use your concordance and don't, of course, if you don't know how to use a concordance, go ahead and Google it. There's nothing wrong with that. But then you just get the scripture reference. Don't read what, the, what anybody in, it's all right, there's no, I'm not talking about bad people, but I'm talking about you studying. Study to show yourself approved. Right. A workman worthy of his heart. Just, you, you, it comes up there, you, you put in there, and, you know, in him, in, in Christ, and it comes up the script. Just get the scripture reference, turn the thing off. Then you go to your Bible and you start, just make your list and then start looking them up and reading them. Now listen, take your notebook, take the time to write these out. You remember what you write and read and speak. Write those scripture verses out in long hand. Now, some of you that journal, this be easy to. The others of you like me, you're going to have to work at it because it takes a little time. But remember, any man that is in Christ is what? A new creature. In him in whom we have redemption, in whom we have received an inheritance. It will absolutely change your heart. Your faith will skyrocket. But you take the time. I don't care. What, who cares if it takes three months? Read it. Look them up. Read them. When you find one of them, then stop and read that chapter. Read the, read the entire book. None of the books in the New Testament, except the book of Revelation, the book of Hebrews, are very long. You'd be shocked at how, how little time it takes <laughs> to read the book of First John, First and Second Thessalonians. You know, I mean, these are, these are small, because they're letters, they're, they're small books. But take the time. You're feeding your spirit. What are you doing? You have left the sincere milk of the world. And you're reaching now for the meat, for those that are full grown, mature believers who are, have become skillful in the word of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Amen. You're no longer <laughs> little scared rabbit you got a sword belted on. <laughs> Don't tell the devil I told you. Yeah, tell him I told you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.